Hello friends and neighbors, Dan Bovey here. Yesterday, ABC 7 News did a story on our greenhouse. The City of West Chicago responded by posting its own version of accounts on the city website. And so I want to respond to that. Unfortunately, what the city posted is so full of inaccuracies and is so deceitful that I feel that we need to go point by point to refute it. And since probably none of you want to listen to me for two hours straight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down. Today is going to be a summary overview, and then I'm going to publish a series of videos responding point by point to what the city said. So today I want to give two examples of the rampant inaccuracy and deceptive nature of what the city published about us yesterday. The first one is something that has been referred to a lot. It's the cost estimate of the structure. According to the city, we applied for a permit for a structure that would cost $7,000. By the time we were done, we had built a $105,000 structure. And on hearing that, people are naturally left with two options. Either one, we were do-it-yourselfers had no idea what we were doing and the project just spiraled and changed until what we had built was totally different in the scope of work from what we had originally permit, permitted. Or secondly, that we were intentionally deceptive and that we tried to pull a fast one on the city by telling them we were going to build something that was $7,000 and then we built something that was actually $105,000. So let me tell you what actually happened in that instance. When we applied for the original permit, we estimated that it would cost $7,000. Those of you that were doing any kind of construction during COVID remember the supply chain crisis. Just after we started doing the project, the price of lumber tripled. And so our costs were more than we expected. We ended up spending $15,000 instead of the $7,000 that we had estimated. So when we applied to renew the permit in the summer of 2023, we went back with the same numbers that we had begun with. And the city came back to us and said, no, we don't want you to give us a cost that's based on your out of pocket. We want you to give us a cost pretending that you're paying yourself. In reality, much of the labor was done by myself and a friend. And so our out-of-pocket cost was at $15,000, not $105,000. The city knew, and I explained to them what I was doing at their request. They knew that the scope wasn't changing, but what was changing was their instructions for the methodology of valuing the project. Okay, let me show you a second example. This one's from the website, so let's look at it. This is what the city posted yesterday. If you go down here, they have a timeline. A project timeline that says through the second permit expiration date. Let's, let's read it. From the approval of the permit, December 22nd, 2020. 22 through July 19, 2023. Talks about four inspections and one failed inspection. It gives some fine that totals. Sounds fairly reasonable. Sounds fairly reasonable. But almost everything in this paragraph is false. So let's move on. Let's look at the detailed project timeline. And that leads us here. There are a ton of things here that are missing. And I just want to highlight for right now, because I'll go through more of this later, but December 1st, 2020, we filed for a permit. And the permit went through three reviews. The reason I want to point that out is because the city's post purports to give you the opportunity to see what was filed with the initial application. It says view original permit application. So we're going to click on that. 
And what comes up is four, five pictures. Basically, an application, a drawing, two drawings. Not very good photocopying there. This kind of jungle gym looking thing and sort of a half a plata survey. Not even the whole thing. So it looks like they turned in four or five documents. The reality is, however, in this first application, we turned in 82 pages of documentation. And if you want to go on our website, savethegreenhouse.com, you can look at all that. You can look at the original documentation and see not only that first application, but then the second application, there's even more documentation. There's over a hundred pages of documentation, supplementary documentation that we turned in, not four pages. That's dishonest. Those four very meager looking pages are a very deliberate attempt to make it look like it was something very different. There's in reality, very detailed construction diagrams. There's engineering studies, snow loads, live loads. They missed 78 pages, and that's significant. The permit process was not a simple thing. It went through three reviews. There were 21 emails back and forth, multiple phone calls, two in-person meetings that we had, and the plans that were submitted reflect the structure that was built. There was no question at that time with the inspectors and city staff who were in place that we were building a substantial greenhouse, a modern greenhouse, a sustainable greenhouse, a unique greenhouse. And that's actually why the permit process took so long, because they said we've never done something like this. That's a geodesic dome on top of a riser wall. And so we were very surprised that after 11 months of refusing to c communicate with us and uh, the mayor and Mr. Gutman uh, not being willing to talk or dialogue with us that suddenly our story was um, on the front page of the city website in a very inaccurate um, version. Their posting says that they wanted to provide people with accurate information, but if that's the case, they failed very badly at it. They failed very badly at just reporting the basic facts. The document is really a collection of misrepresentation and false statements. So I will be um, going through it step by step in the coming days. We want to invite you to look at our website, uh, savethegreenhouse.com. If you want to hear, read more information, uh, we have nothing to hide. Uh, we posted a while back, 377 pages of original documents. The city has made these statements, but they didn't uh, provide any back documentation to back it up. Uh, we've got uh, over 377 pages now of original documentation, and more is on the way. Okay, so last thing. I'm concerned that West Chicago is getting a black eye from all this. Um, uh, we love our town, uh, City West Chicago. We've lived here over 22 years, love the people, uh, the schools, we love the restaurants. And so I'm going to do a little segment at the end of my video of things that I am thankful for uh, about the City West Chicago. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And so first of all, I want to uh, mention my favorite place to have coffee I love going to Kindred uh, Coffee Roasters, great place to sit and have a, a cup of coffee, the world's uh, greatest mocha uh, with your friends. Um, we also love, let's see, we love burrito, um, uh, we love uh, egg yolk, uh, it's always been a favorite for breakfast, um, we love uh, going to... Um, uh, well, another longtime favorite has been Coco Loco, but uh, one that we've been going to a lot recently, um, Gorditas Lisa Elena, is a great place for uh, gorditas if you've uh, never had those um, uh, good, authentic uh, Mexican food. So um, that's my that's my segment on come out and visit West Chicago and see all the great things that. Uh, that our town has to offer. Have a great Thanksgiving and thank you for listening to this exciting presentation.